Now, case number seven. And I didn't even let you preview that one, and you nailed it. I'm pretty impressed. That was very good. Um, okay, let's see. So case seven. And no, I didn't edit that in there. This is this is real time live. Terrence got that one without any any prompting. Okay. So case seven is a 35 year old female with a four centimeter mass of the proximal leg. Let me clean that one off a little more. Oh wow. All right, so it's well circumscribed, nodular. You have these dividing um, septi uh -huh. between these um, nodules themselves. Uh, there is a mature adipose component. Yep. Definitely got some mature fat in there. What else? And then you almost get this. There's like this different type of cell. Almost. Yes. Um, Hard exactly to say what kind of what kind of cell it is, right? It's but if you kind of hallucinate at this point, like at this very field, it kind of looks like almost trying to be um, like a piece of cartilage, almost. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I, I, how I would describe it. Um, but I like that you pointed out you have to hallucinate because I totally <laughs> agree with you that even though the name and I believe it was actually named by. Um, I guess one of my academic ancestors, a Franz Enzinger, who would train Sharon Weiss, who trained me. So even though he made the name and he named a lot of very important soft tissue tumors, yeah, I kind of feel like the small handful of these I've seen are supposed to look chondroid, but they don't look super cartilaginous to me. They don't really look like a real cartilage. But I guess they got that kind of bluish kind of chondromyxoid background and the cells kind of individually sit in their individual right. spaces like like lacuni, I guess I could kind of see that. And then, so obviously you know what this is going to be. And then the last thing that we see is, in addition to these cells kind of sitting in the chondromyxoid background, what about these guys? I mean, I mean, what would you call a cell like that with lipid bubbles that are totally clear indenting the nucleus? I was calling that because I, I thought those were lipoblasts. I mean, they got to be lipoblasts, right? I mean, whatever name anyone wants to call them, to me, that's a lipoblast. It is a true lipid vacuoles in a mesenchymal cell, right? The only other thing that really looks like that, outside from lipoblasts, is like a sebaceous cell, sebacytes, right? But these are not epithelial cells, so it can't be that. So so to me, and, and the reason I bring this up, and I, if I recall, it was probably this very case, actually, when I was in fellowship. And oh, some of them kind of have a slightly granular, reddish sort of looking cytoplasm too, kind of eosinophilic cytoplasm, and others are more bubbly. And then these are the cells that kind of make the little single cells and a little bit of cords and chains and that kind of in the chondroid areas. So what's the diagnosis then? And then I'll tell you my story. Uh, chondroid lipoma. Chondroid lipoma, exactly. And I mentioned to you earlier before we started this video that there are sometimes that actual lipomas can get cartilage metaplasia. And that's different. This is a specific entity that is not a lipoma and not a cartilage tumor. It's its own kind of entity. And um, they have lipoblasts. So I, when I saw this case, actually in fellowship, I remember I looked at it and I was like, what the heck is this? And evidently I didn't do enough reading um, to figure out what it was like you did. And so I said, well... Um, I said, Dr. Weiss, I don't know what this is, but I think it must be some sort of liposarcoma. I mean, it's got lipoblasts. It has to be a liposarc, right? And she was like, something like, well, Jared, you missed the chance to make a really rare and interesting diagnosis. And I was <laughs> like, oh, and the shame of it still lives with me to this day. So so sometimes our, our misses in training, the time, things we get wrong in training, um, that's a great thing, time to get stuff wrong because it really like teaches you for the long run. So this is, in, in fact, a benign tumor, chondroid lipoma and a really nice example of one. And sometimes they can get uh, really unusual vascular changes like with a lot of hemorrhage and, and fibrin um, uh, deposition around vessels. And I just showed one uh, recently to the residents at McGill University in Canada. And I didn't know that that could happen actually, because again, these are rare. I've only seen a handful of them. And they said, oh yeah. And so I must have skipped that day of fellowship too. And uh, they told me, oh yeah, you can totally have that. And I went and looked it up and yes, they were right. So I learn a lot from, from getting stuff wrong clearly. So chondroid lipoma, really fascinating uh, entity and extremely rare. All right.